So thank, thank you and thank you for the invitation. I am from Luke, Natural Resources Institute of Finland. If that's an uh, odd name, we are quite new, but we are not the predatory institute. We are, it's a combination of uh, Infinis, Metla, MDT and ErkoTL. We, we started uh, last year, uh, beginning of, uh, beginning of uh, 2015. So we are still, still learning to, to be a Luke. So uh, I was asked to uh, give a presentation about the uh, open pair review uh, and, and I added this, would it be a savior of the uh, peer review and uh, I first uh, list out what open peer review is and can be and, and after that I, I try to uh, convince you what might be the wrong in the old system and why, why do we need open, open peer review. <coughs> So uh, firstly, uh, open peer review can be so that uh, the identity of the, of the review is, is, is open, so that anybody can spot them and, and look if they really are an expert on their field and should, should they actually be doing this, this kind of a review. The other thing is that uh, the reviews can be found, so the identity is still, uh, still hidden, so it's a blind, blind review but the, uh, you, can, you can see the reviews and, and what, what kind of a, uh, evaluation they have been doing. And finally, it's, uh, it can be an open invitation. So anybody who's interested and, and considered him, him or her as an expert can participate in this, this review process. And uh, in this presentation, I will concentrate on this last one, uh, partly because the uh, the other two can actually, they are not exclusive, so they can be part of this open invitation. And uh, I, I personally, I don't believe very much in open identity of the reviews because then you immediately have some kind of a carefulness. Of course, many of the review systems nowadays ask if you want to be uh, anonymous or if you want your name to be known by the, by the, uh, by the, uh, the authors, but anyhow, this, uh, I haven't, I, I maybe have, have had one review in my life where the uh, review wanted to have his, his or her name revealed. So I, I put bracket uh, or, the, or the question marks on this oh, anyone. So it doesn't mean that I can ask my mother to, uh, can you review my paper? But uh, anybody in the system, I, I, uh, in the later in the presentation, I pre present the system where, where this is applied, this system. So how it can work, but any, anyhow, the, the idea is that any of you who have been in research and, and thinks that, okay, I know this field, so I would like to review this paper. So you have an, you have an uh, access on this, this system. Whereas now, like, like I saw later on, uh, the journal editors have, the, they are dictators in this, this business. They can send your paper anywhere and, and to anyone they, they like, or actually it happens that they, they will send it to somebody who is free at the moment and uh, accepts the paper. Many times this is not the best option, but they, they, don't, they don't have any options. Because people are busier and busier. So, uh, what, what's wrong with the old system? If, if um, I put this savior of the, of the peer review, so w what might be wrong in the old system? Well, uh, I will start uh, uh, with a quotation of, of my, my colleague. He, he once quite nicely put it that the scientific publishers have, have invented uh, a perfect business idea. They, they, they have the best brains in their use for free. And this is actually, actually true. The, the publishers, they receive the product, the manuscripts, for free. They are not paying any, anything for it. Actually, in many times, like we heard, we have to pay it. Sometimes even even thousand thousand euros or thousand uh, one thousand five hundred was the plus article charge uh, charge later latest when I when I checked. Uh, but the editors too then that they send they can't evaluate the paper. Sometimes they can, but many times they are not the experts. So they they will send it to sometimes the best brains in the world, and they will get this service for free. And then when the best brains have uh, said what is wrong with the product, the creator of the product will improve the product for free. And after that, when the product is ready, they will sell it back to us, who wrote it and who reviewed it. 
it's a perfect system. They don't they don't put any any real hard work, if, if I may so say so, in this work, and, and they will get the profit. Of course, this is uh, only partly true. Uh, the uh, publishers didn't invent the system. The, in, the system have been there for 200 years or so. Even even Darwin and uh, guys like that. I'm a biologist or uh, graduated here, so I, by, uh, Darwin is, the, is my reference. So even Darwin did review work. So, uh, and uh, this kind of a uh, concentration of, of journals that do this ha is, is quite, quite recent, I would say. The Springer and elsewhere and Kluver, they are buying these uh, journals that used to be really uh, small gate journals in maybe a university journal. When I started my studies here in the uh, Department of Biology, we had our own journal. The Library of, of Biology had an old journal. And some, uh, some of the researchers were using that. It doesn't exist anymore, but many institutes have journals that have been bought by, let's say, Springer. So these uh, journals were there before the, these large publishers bought them and started to do business. So in, in that sense, it's, uh, it's not a system that they invented, but they are using it quite, quite efficiently. So uh, because this this system is, is so profitable, it is no wonder that there is more and more interest to join this business. And this is, um, I don't know if you see it, but it's a homepage of Hindavi. It's a very, uh, very nice homepage and they have very nice looking journals. I mean, really professionally done journals. And they have, I think nowadays over, well, at least over 400, maybe 500, 500 uh, journals. And uh, so this is actually on, on the Bell's uh, homepage. So I, I guess he doesn't, uh, he doesn't list Hindavi or, or any of the journals of, of, as, uh, as, as predatory journals or predatory publishers, pub publisher, but uh, he is following that quite closely. And uh, I don't know if you see it, but it says that House of Spam so this uh, publishes house, uh, home page, uh, home is, is, is called here a house of spam. And what, what they do, I, I put the Hindavi as an example because I, I get a lot of emails from Hindavi. So what Hindavi does is not only that the editors will send the request to, to review the uh, articles, but what they do nowadays more and more is that they invite people to be associated editors and they launch a thematic issue. So this associated editor will then collect his or her colleagues to write articles to be sent on this thematic issue. And then this associated editor will find the reviewers to review these papers. And when the review invitation comes from your colleague, you are more likely to review the paper than it com if it comes from, from predatory well, in this case, it might, might not be uh, in this list, but if, even if it's in, the, in this list. So this is quite a clever system. And uh, when you think that there are over 400 of these journals, they need a lot of reviewers. And these uh, associated editor jobs are, are getting, getting more familiar and familiar in, in these, these kind of journals. So, all these needs a lot of review effort, and so they are looking reviews all the time. So what this has led to is that it is getting harder and harder to find any kind of brains to do the reviews, not to mention the best brains. For example, here is one creature that was reminded that, okay, it, it's me, you haven't done your review, and I, I didn't know that I I have to do this review. So I was starting to look back on my, my unread emails and there it was. They invited me and it is a good journal. I think this is, uh, I don't remember. Well, it's not, not an awful good, but it's anyhow, this is, I think it's elsewhere or Springer. I don't remember which one. Anyhow, uh, when, you, when you look at the uh, email address, this kind of email address easily goes in the, in the spam, for example. But uh, still, I, take, uh, I know this journal, I've been following it for, for uh, every now and then, 
So it is an existing uh, and, and good journal, but still it was, and it, it didn't go in my, my spam mail. It was on the list of the unread emails. I just didn't spot it. So this kind of a things happens quite often, I'm afraid, at least for me. And so it, it, it lies there maybe for a month. And then I notice it and then I say, okay, I will do the review. So it will take, and I think they gave quite much, maybe even one month or two months maybe. So for the order, this means that uh, in the meantime, when the editor tries to find a review, reviewer, the paper lies there somewhere. Nothing happens to it. So it takes more and more time to have your paper reviewed and then accept it finally. One, uh, the longest time that I waited uh, a review was one and a half year from a quite nice journal actually. So the editor maybe forgot to send it or it was on the reviewer's table and I was asking and they, they were looking maybe or they lost my emails. So after one and a half year I got a review. It had uh, one or two lines. Honestly, it was it was a good journal. So this happens. So the problem uh, in the uh, editorial world or, the, or in the journal world, and this of course goes for the authors as well, it, it touches them, they work directly. How to get motivated reviews? It not only reviewers, because many reviewers don't do a very good job. They are busy, they were asked them. Um, and sometimes they can't say no because if they want to publish in these journals. So how to get motivated reviewers? You can give them credit somehow. So if you give them some, something, maybe, maybe they are more willing to do the review. So maybe uh, give a diploma. So this is something that I can take to my mother and say that, okay, let's <laughs> see mother, I, your son got the first diploma. But uh, as he doesn't know what reviewing is, I don't, I don't think he cares very much. So uh, this is maybe not the best. Of, of course, it uh, says that, okay, you've been recognized. You've been, you've, you've been doing something. What you get is, uh, uh, how you get this is that you do a number of reviewers. Uh, maybe a better, especially if you're not in the university or, or you, if you don't have access on, on the databases, they give uh, this kind of a, access to the, uh, the databases and, and uh, machines and, and, and so forth that are actually quite valuable if you have to buy them. So this is already something. But uh, many times if you are, and mo most of us are in universities or institutes, we already have an access of to the systems. We pay for them. So this doesn't help very much. So lately, um, Quite lately, actually, uh, this problem has been not, uh, noted also by, by researchers themselves, and they have been starting to do this kind of a, uh, systems that give a credit to reviewers, so that the reviewers are noted. This is quite new, Pablon, and uh, as you see here, it was noted also in the Nature. I don't know if you know Nature, but uh, in the Natural Sciences, that the uh, benchmark, let's say so. And in this uh, Nature article, they are highlighting this, the importance of this, giving, a, giving, giving a credit for the, for the reviews. And, uh, but in this, uh, in this article, one thing uh, caught my eye. It's an interview of one, one reviewer, and I, I enlarged that. He says that Generally, I review about 100 manuscripts per year. I'm sure that this is far more than most others. Well, I'm sure as well. The question is why? Why do you do it? I mean, but this, this tells something. The reviewing work is, is concentrating more and more to the same people. So this poor guy does two reviews per week. And some, some of course, don't, don't do anything then. Uh, I don't do 100 reviews per day, <laughs> or week, <laughs> sorry, a year. Uh, I don't, if, unfortunately, I haven't kept track how many reviews I, I've been doing, but I, uh, for this, uh, 
when, when Mari sent this invitation, I started to dig my, my files. And, and this is the, uh, I found the uh, journals that, that I've been reviewing in. So this is the list of journals that I, that I reviewed the papers. And when I started to uh, go through this, I, I then started to think that, OK, there are journals like primates. So if I think my future career and uh, the uh, forums that I'm going to publish in, primates is maybe not the first one in the uh, line because I'm living in Lapland. We have only one primate species. That's a homo sapiens. I'm not going to study that one. So maybe I could drop that one. Uh, I'm doing some environmental monitoring in, in uh, Olkiluoto area, but still I most likely won't publish anything about radioactivity, hopefully. So maybe I would skip this journal as well. I don't do any reviews for that journal anymore. So if I start to think, and, and if all the reviewers start to think this along these lines, so that I will do reviewers only for the journals that I'm going to publish in, or most likely, I would like to publish in these journals, and I will concentrate my review activity on these journals. It will be pretty boring for the small journals. They, they, they have even harder and harder job to find reviewers, a, a qualified reviewers. So the main problem in this kind of a systems that, that give credit, whether they are the publishing houses that give diplomas or access to their databases, or whether they are these kind of new systems that give credit to the, to the reviewers that do, let's say, 100 reviews per year, is that they are measuring the quantity of the reviews. How many reviews do you do? It doesn't matter, is it a good review or bad review? Just say no, that's a review. This is not acceptable. Or, well, too many pages, rejected, uh, poor abstract, rejected. So every time you get an, a credit, a number in, you, in your uh, list of, of whatever it is on these home pages. But at the same time, at least in most cases, uh, the manuscripts are reviewed for their quality. So couldn't we? review the quality of the reviews. So can we peer review the peer reviews? And uh, one thing is that if we can do that, we can, we can credit them for doing a good reviews. And the other thing, the main thing in open, open, uh, open review is that let the people choose what they want to review. Because when a journal sent you a review, it, it doesn't give you an access to all their reviews. They just give you a paper that review this within two weeks or in mon one month if, if you have a long time. But if I could choose, I could pick maybe these and these articles are exactly what I'm doing. And this is interesting. This is new stuff that I would like to see and maybe give them some kind of advice what they are doing. So here we come to the open review in, in the sense that I'm, I see it. Uh, how many do you know this period of science? Okay, quite, quite a few anyhow. I present this system, there might be others, but I present this system because it's Finnish one. It is created by guys who actually graduated from here, all the university. They work at the moment in Uvascula, but anyhow, they, they, uh, they uh, originally are from are the local guys. So the basic idea of the spirits of science, or the background, these are a few slides that I got from the admin of, of spirits of science, uh, Janne Thomas Seppälä. Are these few points that ac actually I have already listed. When you submit your, your paper to a journal, what happens is that you give them rights that are exclusive and, and quite tight. First of all, you exclusively give right uh, to, the, to the schedule. Like I mentioned, I waited one, one time I waited one and a half year. 
The other problem is that uh, you don't know when you get the review back and how fastly you have to respond. So for, a, for example, I'm, I'm ecologist. Uh, I usually, during the summer times, I'm, I'm in the field. And uh, if I'm lucky, I can have a holiday on July. And it wouldn't be the first time that the Central European Journal sent a reviewer on the end of June saying that you have two weeks to respond. So that was the holiday. Uh, then what is important is that they have, the editor of that journal, have an exclusive right to appoint reviewers. And this is important. He chooses them, and many times he chooses them only on the basis that who accepts the invitation, who has time. Is not reviewing for a journal that he or she thinks is a better journal. And what is even more important is that they have the exclusive right to use the reviewers. Uh, and only them. So if, if it's uh, rejected, you have to do the same thing again. Nobody sees these reviews. They may be good or bad. If they were good, a lower ranked journal, let's say so, lower ranked journal, would accept your paper. But no, they don't see the reviews. You have to do it again. Then the reviews are going to be different. And of course, the editor can ignore the reviews. That sometimes happens. I don't remember the name of the, maybe you know better. There was a case in 80s or 90s. There was this German guy who had a 15 science and nature articles in two years. Uh, and all of these were scams. The nature and science have to pull back this. I don't know if, if, do you know this case? Maybe somebody has heard it. So the nature had to, uh, and science had to take back uh, 15 articles because they were, they were false. The, the data was false. And it turned out then that the editor was warned, the reviewers warned that this can't be, this can't be so. But they wanted this. It was so hot subject at the time that they wanted this. So this can happen. And like I said before, the uh, journal has an exclusive right to sit on the manuscript as long as it takes to, uh, to make up their mind. So what uh, this spirit of science is, is trying to do or is doing, that the author, when he or she submits the paper, sorry, it is in the system and then there's a two communities that see this paper. First is peers. They are a number of peers that are registered. And they are registered so that uh, they check that uh, you are a scientist. So it means that your email address have to be in at least one, I think at least one uh, article that has been published. So that is going to be checked. That is the criteria. And then there are editors. This is important. I come to that later on. What the reviewers do is that they review the paper. So the reviews are in, in the system. And so the author and the editors and the other peers that have been reviewing this paper can see these reviews. So now, now comes the important part. So how do we make sure that the reviewers and the reviews are good or bad? Of course we can. The, the reviewers do their job. But the other beers that have produced these reviews, they are either bad or they, they are good. They review the other reviews. They give points to the reviews. And now the author can decide that, okay, this is quite useful. I can improve it. This also, this also, but this is lousy. And all the other beers also say that this is lousy. So I, I ignore that. So I, when I do a new manuscript, a revised manuscript, I then reply to these reviews and say to this one review that I don't quite agree. And uh, what is important is that the editors see that. And the community sees that. Uh, the editors, they can be editors in these this journals that are within the system at the moment. They have 20 journals and it is growing. And then they have uh, 
sort of a followers and, and plus one, for example, is quite important. And then Springer, Springer is somehow following the system as well. So these editors, when they see the system, the author can send the paper to these journals and with the reviews or the editor who sees the system and sees that this paper is nice and it's already been reviewed, they can offer the publication in their journals for these authors. So these uh, systems have three players who all benefit from the, from the system. And what is important is that this, uh, these peers that are in the system, they can select the papers that they are interested in. So you always get motivated reviews. So I give an example. I, uh, I have to say that I haven't lately been very active in this, in this, in this system, but uh, at the beginning I did some reviews. So for, a, for each two reviews that you do, you can send a man, your own manuscript to be evaluated. So this traditional sort of a moral obligation. If you publish one paper, you do two reviews. So this works here as well. So I, I did few reviews and then we sent a paper to this system. Uh, in our case, we got only one review. It sometimes happens, I think, I think in 10% of the cases, uh, they don't have any, any review. So either the uh, title is, is sort of uninteresting or the abstract is un, un, is interesting or the, it's, it's a kind of area that there is no peers. So, but in most cases, they, they, have, they have reviews. In our case, we had only one review. So what we did is that we improved the paper and then in this system, one editor is the Silva Fennica, say that, okay, this sounds interesting, send, send it to us. And then what happened is that they actually took it like that. We had to do some modifications uh, according to what the editor asked, but anyhow, this system worked us so that we got comments out for our manuscript, and when we improved it, we got it directly to the, to the paper. Uh, I don't know if you see it. Uh, Originally, this, uh, this system was, it was more or less ecology. But nowadays, they have enlarged the system. So here is uh, application of, uh, so this is kind of an alert that, you, that every peer that, that is interested in, in some field, they will get this kind of a note every now and then when they are new paper. So this is application of decision making for optimal condition method to analyze operation efficiency of hydro power plant. I don't know anything about that, so I don't take that. So then there is an illocutionary act of God in Kierkegaard's philosophy. I don't know what that means, so I don't take that. And just a couple of days ago, I got this kind of thing that, that's about biology and ecology that, that I might review. I don't actually, because I don't have time, but I could. So this is, uh, this is one, one thing so that you engage if you are willing to do that. And now they have just uh, improved the system so that you can make all this public. You have this own homepage for, you, for yourself uh, that you can, you can make totally public that everybody sees that how many reviews you have done. This is actually the last, Jan Engler is the last year's uh, Periods of Science Review Prize winner. They, every, every year they give a, a review prize. I think there even some money included in that. So this can be public and you can link this to, to your homepage or your CV and, and so forth so that even those that don't publish that much, they can be credited for doing good reviews because not only the, the number of reviews that you have done, but also the, uh, the uh, credit for the quality of your work is now evaluated and, and uh, it's, it's uh, given points that you can, you can make public. So, just to conclude, the open, open peer review, it is a way to get better reviews and, and improve the science, I would say, the quality of the science. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure there must be some questions now. <laughs> this was very, very nice presentation.
like I said, I, I haven't <laughs> been, past two years, I haven't been very active in this system, but it is a system that everybody can have an access. So in, if you are interest, interested uh, to participate and, and get comments to your manuscripts, for example, you can go there and join, join the system. And it's free. <laughs> for the scientists, it's free. They are trying to get money from the uh, journals, from the editors. Try to fund the uh, system from that end, not, not from the scientists. <laughs> Are there any questions? I may have one. Yeah. Uh, do you see that in the future there could be a profession of a peer reviewer? Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. In one, I saw one presentation where, where the universities mm. were sort of encouraged, encouraged to, to put more effort on this, this arena, that at maybe not a profession, but at least their uh, scientists, teachers and so forth, they would be credited somehow for the review work. Now mm. it's sort of all hidden, nobody mm. knows about it. That's of course mm. part of the business that your identity is not revealed, but uh, of course in this kind of a system you mm. don't review, uh, you don't, um, put out loud what are the papers that you've been reviewing, but the number of the reviews you've been doing, and if you have done it well, for example. So I, there is some pressure to do that, but, but as a profession, I doubt it. Yeah, but it, it's interesting, like you said, that someone can be a good reviewer, yeah. even though not maybe exactly. publishing very exactly. much. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And many times, I, mm -hmm. I think it's so, people that are, who are reading a lot, they know if the paper is good or bad, so they can, <laughs> even help for the scientists, so that saying that, okay, now it's 50 pages and 30 pages are waste of paper, <laughs> just cut it down to 20 pages and then it's good, something like this. Any other questions? <laughs> you get two <laughs> microphones. <laughs> So you have two questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, first, I, the one thing in, in this publication per se is that um, if you are doing something in very popular area and you are looking for publications, and so I've, I've been talking about that issue on several times in, in my in our bioinformatics course. And, and my apoptosis is one of my favorite examples, so I just checked during this lesson that there's 27,000 publications on that issue in last year alone. So it means over 100 per day, uh, working day. And, um, well, does this kind of approach help to have that research to be at least some quality included inside of it because those publications, they are so many and the results are so contradictory that uh, basically they are worth of nothing. Mm. Yeah. So it means that there's a scientific rubbish is published every day more and more and more. And these predatory journals of course help very much on that. And um, even the quality papers do that. As you mentioned, the science and nature is not intact in that field either. Um, and that is the big issue for the future coming researchers and scientists. How to find the gold nugget inside of that very vast ocean of rubbish. Mm -hmm. And um, how to improve that uh, the quality of science instead of the quality of publishing. Um, well, I don't have any, any help on that, but maybe the library people may have some solutions of yeah, it's a, it's managing the... It's, it's not a problem only for the journals and, 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 and for the scientists, but, but I think that's a main problem for the starting scientists who, who doesn't know actually if it's rubbish or not. They are si swimming in this sea of rubbish and uh, <laughs> they have to quote somebody and which, which work is sort of right and which is wrong if, if we can say that like that. So how, how, to, uh, how can they identify the rubbish from the... Uh, from the gold nuggets, like you said. Yeah, yeah you're right. You have 100 papers per day published every day. Yeah, exactly. So you are doing nothing but reading those 100 papers. Exactly. Yeah. So I can divide and see that 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah, I don't have any answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a very tough question. Yeah. And basically, after listening to this presentation this morning, we are living very disruptive times. And maybe the system is even changing somehow. Yeah, I, th I think the predatory <laughs> publishers have, have forced even the traditional publishers <laughs> to change their style. For example, we just had a rejection from uh, one spring paper and then like I said that they have the uh, inclusive right exclusive right to use the ref uh, referees actually within the house they can now they are starting to trans transport the uh, reviews to, uh, to another journal and now Springer has this uh, competing for plus one this Springer plus which is I think 1000 euros per article so what they did is that they asked us if, if we want our paper to be reviewed in this journal. So I guess they just transform, transported reviews to, a, to, to this editor and then they accept it in Springer. So they have this system which is sort of a working in the same way than, than the predatory journals or, or, or the open access <coughs> journals. And this Springer process is, is open access. It's quite new actually. I, I think they started just a year ago. Yeah. <coughs> And then, of course, the even normal, normal journals, like you were talking about the hybrid, uh, hybrid systems. Uh, even the normal, normal journals have this, that if you pay, let's say, 500 mm -hmm. euros, you can have your paper open access. So mm -hmm. you, have, you see this on the, on the list, of, yes. list of papers. You see it is unlocked <laughs> that you can access, but you have to pay for it. The scientists mm -hmm. have to pay for it. Yes. We are living interesting times yeah. and, and that is the peer review is the very essence of the science. Exactly. So, so maybe this is the savior. Exactly. Only time will tell. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs>